In this quick step-by-step -step tutorial, we're gonna show you how to set up PostgreSQL with Fast API. My name is Eric Roby. I'm an instructor, a software engineer, and a cloud enthusiast. So if you wanna learn everything tech, come check out my channel. And with that, let's dive into Fast API with PostgreSQL. All right, so what we're gonna do in this project is set up Fast API with PostgreSQL. And PostgreSQL is one of the most popular databases in the world for relational databases. And FastAPI is an upcoming and super popular Python microservice framework. So let's dive in and let's create a FastAPI and Postgres application. So the very first thing we wanna do as always is go ahead and create a virtual environment. So let's go ahead and say new terminal. And to do this, let's just go ahead and say Python 3 dash M V, E, and V, and then we'll name the environment just E and V for the environment. And that will create an environment right here in our directory. And now let's go ahead and just activate the environment by saying source E and V slash bin slash activate. All right, and we can tell that it's activated because we can see this little environment right before our directory. So that's awesome stuff. And now let's go ahead and install all the dependencies we need for this application. And we can do this by saying pip install. We know we need fast API. We are going to need SQL Alchemy, which is gonna be our ORM, our object relational mapping to our Postgres database. And we can just type in SQL Alchemy. And the very last one we need is some kind of connection port that'll connect our Postgres to our Fast API application. And we can do this by typing in PSY COPG2 binary. And once you type that in, it'll just start downloading everything we need for this application in our in virtual environment. And a virtual environment is super popular because instead of having all of these dependencies on our computer, we can silo these dependencies into each project. So this is our fast API Postgres directory, and we can create an environment for this application without all these dependencies going to all of our other Python applications. So create a virtual environment and install all these dependencies. And now we can go ahead and create our application. Now for this application, we are gonna be creating this quiz game. This quiz is gonna have a quiz and a question, and that's pretty much it. We're not gonna have it fully functional, but we're gonna be able to save multiple tables to a Postgres database, so you can kind of see where we're going in that direction. So the very first thing I'm going to do is just right click and say new file, and we're gonna call this main.py, and this is gonna be our main fast API file. And the first thing that we're going to do here is just say from fast API, we want to import fast API. And since we're here, we might as well just go ahead and do our HTTP exception and our depends. These three things we're going to need in our fast API application so we can run and be able to call the APIs and everything. Now, the next thing we want to import is Pydantic. So we can say from Pydantic, we want to import base model. And this is the base model for all of our data validation that we're gonna be using with Pydantic. We next wanna say from typing, we want to import list and annotated. And let's go ahead and say that's everything for right now. Now, as always, just like any other fast API application, we now need to create our app and we can say app equals fast API. And don't forget the parentheses. Now here, let's go ahead and create our two pydantic um, base models. So for choice and question. So we can start by saying class choice base and we're gonna pass in our base model. And simply inside here, we want choice text to be of type string. And then we want is correct to be of type Boolean. And now we really wanna do the exact same thing for questions. So we have our choice base with our base model. And now let's go ahead and do our question where we can say class question base. And inside here, we can pass in our base model. 
where we say question text is of type string. And then we can say choices is going to be of type list and we will pass in our choice base. So when we call our Pydantic choice base, it's going to have a text and is that question correct for the choices of for a multiple choice quiz. And then our quiz is going to have a question and it's going to have a list of choices and one of them going to be correct. All right, so if we continue on, we need to then go ahead and start creating our API endpoints. But before we do that, let's go ahead and create our data models for our Postgres database. Let's go ahead and just create the database for Postgres. And then let's also create the database.py file that will kind of connect it all together, our fast API application with our Postgres database. I'm going to first say new file, and then I'm going to create a new models.py. And in this models.py file, we want to really import a lot from SQL Alchemy. And again, SQL Alchemy is going to be our object relational mapping. It's our ORM that is going to connect to our database so we can do simple queries to be able to fetch data from the database. So we can say from SQL Alchemy import and we want to say Boolean column foreign key integer and string. So these are going to be all the different types for our database. Perfect. And now from here, let's go ahead and just create our database.py file real quick, because I forgot we're going to need this for our models.py file. So let's go ahead and create our database.py file. And inside here, let's say from SQL Alchemy, import create engine. Then we want to say from SQL Alchemy dot ORM, we want to import our session maker. And then lastly, let's say from SQL Alchemy dot EXT dot declarative, we want to import our declarative base. Now, after we got these done, we can now go ahead and create our URL string to our Postgres database. But before we do that, let's go ahead and just open up PG admin. Now, if you don't have Postgres or PG admin currently yet installed on your machine, I will be creating a video. When that video is created, you're going to be able to see it around me somewhere. Feel free to click on that. Um, but for the meantime, let's go in here inside our Postgres PG admin, which is a GUI for Postgres, we need to first create our database. So we can just right click on databases and say create database. And inside here, I'm going to call this quiz application YT for YouTube. And then I'm going to say save. Here we can see that we have our quiz application YouTube. If we go into our schemas and we open up our tables, we can see our tables is currently empty. So now let's go ahead and go back to our application. And from here, let's just go ahead and say URL database equals. And then right here, we want to say Postgres QL colon slash slash. And now we need to type in the user. Now my username on my Postgres database is Postgres. So I'm going to type in Postgres. And then you need to type in a colon and now the password to the user. And my password for my user is test one, two, three, four exclamation mark. And now we need to say the path so we can say at localhost and Postgres is always on port 5432. So we can say of 5432 and then we can say slash quiz application y t so our url to our database is going to be our path to our local installation of postgres with our user's first name and last name all right and now from here we want to say our engine so we can create a new engine which is equal to create engine 
And inside here, we'll pass in our URL of database. And now we need to create our session local. So we can say session local equals our session maker. And now inside of here, we want to say auto commit is equal to false. Auto flush is equal to false. And lastly, we want to bind our session local to our engine right above. And our engine is going to necessarily going to create our engine of our database with our path of our fast API application to our database. All right, and then the very last thing we wanna say is base, which we're gonna be using in our other files, is equal to our declarative base. All right, and now let's go back to our models. And we already imported SQL Alchemy's Boolean, column, foreign key, integer, and string. And now we wanna say from database, import base. And now we can go ahead and create our tables that we want saved in our database. So we know that we want our questions. So we can say class questions. And we want to pass in base here. We want to name the table something. So we can say table name, which is underscore, underscore, table name, underscore, underscore. And here we want to equal this to questions. So we're going to name our table questions and we want this to have an ID, which is a column in our database table where it's going to be an integer. The primary key for this will be true and the index will be true. Now a primary key means it's going to be like the unique identifier for this entire question that we'll be saving in the database. So we're going to say it's going to be an integer. And then since it's going to be a primary key, each integer, so each ID of each question will be totally unique from each other. And then index equals true just increases performance and Postgres a little bit when we're querying for a specific ID. We then want to say question text because that's another column we want in our database equals a column and we're gonna just pass in string and then we're also gonna say index equals true here. So this is gonna be our first table within our database, which is questions, which has an ID and question text. And now we want to go ahead and say class choices. And we also wanna pass in base here. We wanna say this is going to be named choices. And just like above, we want an ID for our choices, which is going to be a column of integer where we can say the primary key is going to be equal to true. And we want it to have an index, which is also equal to true. We want it to have a choice text, which is going to be the answer that we're going to be able to select where we can say column. And inside here, we'll pass in string and index is equal to true. We want to say is correct, which is going to be, you know, just a Boolean that says, is this answer correct for the question? And we can say this is going to be a column where we're going to be passing in a Boolean and we want the default answer to be false. And then lastly, we want to create a question ID which is equal to column. And inside here, we can pass an in integer foreign key, which is going to be the foreign key of a question. So each choice is going to be associated with a question. So we want this to be associated with a questions.id. So again, to recap, we have our class questions, which has, which is going to create a table of questions with an ID in question text. And then we're going to have a class of choices with a table of choices with an ID choice text is correct and a question ID, which is a foreign key that will link back to questions. So awesome stuff. All right, so now we can close out of both of those and go back to our main.py file. And right now we want to import some things from our database and models. So let's just go ahead and say we want to import all of models, which is going to be our database tables. And then we want to say from database, import our engine 
and our session local. And then lastly, from sqlalchemy.orm, we want to import our session. And that's gonna be our session for our database. Okay, so now under our app equals fast API, we wanna say models.base.metadata.create all and we want to pass in our bind that is going to be equal to our engine from our database this line will create all of the tables and columns in postgres so now after we create these classes we need to create a connection to the database and we can do this by saying def get db and inside here, we want to say DB equals a um, new session local. And we want to try something because it can fail. So we want to say try yield DB. And then we always want to say finally db.close. So we're always going to try and open it. And then no matter what, we will always close our DB connection. All right, so now we have our Postgres string connected to our application. We have our database and everything configured. The next step is just going to be writing API endpoints for our entire application. But before we do that, we actually need to go ahead and create some annotations. So we can say db underscore dependency. So this is gonna be for dependency injection equals annotated. And we wanna pass in our session. And we wanna say this depends on our get db all right now let's go ahead and create our api endpoints so the very first one we will create is being able to create questions and choices for our application so we can say at app dot post and inside here we can say slash questions and we want this to be called async def and we're going to say create questions where we are expecting a question of type question base, which is our Pydantic model above for data validation purposes. And then we want to say DB of DB dependency. So we're passing in a data validation that's going to validate the body of the API request. And then we're going to be able to create a connection to our database from our fast API application. So this is awesome stuff. All right, now let's go ahead and just say DB question is going to be equal to our models dot question. And here we're going to be using some SQL alchemy to write an ORM statement that will link us back to a piece of data in the database. And inside here, we want to say question text is going to be equal to question dot question text. We want to say db dot add and we want to add our db question. We then want to say db dot commit. We then want to refresh it so we can say db dot refresh and we can pass in our db question again. And now we want to say for choice in our question dot choices where we can say db choice is going to be equal to our models dot choices and now we need to pass in everything for our choices so inside our models dot choices we can say choice underscore text equals choice dot which equals choice dot choice text is underscore correct is equal to choice dot is correct. And then lastly, we want to say question underscore ID is going to be equal to db question dot ID. All right, so we're doing a quick filter for our DB choice, which we're going to be looking in our models dot choices and pass in some arguments for that object. 
Let's then go ahead and say db.add and we will add in our new db choice. We then want to say db.commit. And that is really all we want to do for this. So with all of this, we've created our database tables, our database connection strings, and our first API endpoint. Let's go ahead and just open up our terminal and let's run our application. And we can do this by saying uvicorn main colon app dash dash reload. And I must have forgot to install uvicorn. So let's go ahead and just say pip install uvicorn. All right, now let's go ahead and do the exact same command. All right, so now let's go ahead and open up our browser. Let's open up this post request and let's say try it out. The question text is going to be what is the best? What is the best Python framework? We can say fast API, which is going to be true. And then right after this, we can pretty much just say anything else and we'll make that false. All right, let's click execute. If we scroll down, we can see that we get a status code of 200 with a response body of null. And now if we go into our PG admin and we refresh our tables, we can see that we automatically have choices and questions now created. Now, if we click this query tool in the top left hand corner and I say select star from choices and I click this play button, we're going to get our two questions, fast API and anything else, which has a question ID foreign key of one. And therefore, if we come in here and we say of questions and we run this, we're gonna get what is the best Python framework. All right, cool stuff. Let's go back to our application and let's go ahead and just write a few more endpoints. So now right above this post, I'm going to go ahead and create a new um, get request method to be able to fetch a question. So let's go ahead and just say app at app.get and we will say here slash questions slash and right here we will pass in a question underscore id or we can say async def read question and we will pass in a question id which is going to be equal to an int and then we want to add our db of db dependency Okay, we're moving right along and now let's go ahead and just say result equals db dot query. And inside here we want to say models dot questions dot filter where we can pass in our models dot questions dot ID equals our question ID that we're passing in as a path parameter. And then we want to say dot first. So it's going to get the very first record that it finds in the database. Now we want to make sure that result is not empty or um, none or null. So we can say if not result, we want to raise an HTTP exception where we can pass in a status code of 404 and we can say a detail, which is question is not found. And if it is found, though, we'll just return the result. So if we go back into our terminal and we start up the application again by saying uvicorn main colon app dash dash reload. And we go back to our browser, if I can find it. If we refresh this, we can see we now have a get request where we can pass in a one and we're gonna get a question text. What is the best Python framework with an ID of one? And that'll match exactly what we have in our Postgres database. All right, and let's just go ahead and do one more API endpoint for choices. So right under our questions, let's go ahead and just say at app.get 
git and we will say slash choices this time but we want to pass in our question ID still. So we're not gonna get one choice. We're gonna get all of the choices for that specific question. All right, so now let's just go ahead and say async def read underscore choices, where we can pass in a question ID that is of type int, and we can pass in our db of db dependency. All right, and now inside here, we want to say result equals db.query, but the query will be a little bit different than how we did our questions, um, where we're gonna say models.choices.filter, and we're gonna pass in our models.choices.questionID equals our question ID that we're passing in. And just like we did up here, we can just copy this and paste it in here. So if not result, raise an HTTP exception of choices is not found. And if they are found, we will just return our result. Let's make sure our terminal is running, which it is. Let's go back to our application where we can pass in a one here as well. And we got a server error. So let's see what's going on here. Oh, okay. And it's because I didn't say anything at the end. We need to, we need to say dot all so our ORM knows to fetch all of the records. So now let's go back and let's just hit this again. And now we're gonna get all of the choices for that question one. So. If we look at the question, the question is, what is the best Python framework? And our choices from Postgres is going to be fast API, which is true, and anything else, which is false. So with this, we just went ahead and created a fast API application using Postgres and PG admin to save all of our records we just create an entire application super fast. And that's the power of fast API. If you enjoyed this video, please give it a like and a comment. And I will see you in the next video.